Hello, um, welcome to the Chronicle. This is another exclusive, and we are here live in Brufood to meet the leader of Gambia Action Party, Mr. Lamin Bojang. I am Keba Jefang, the host of the program. Mr. Bojang, welcome to the Chronicle. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Um, to start with, uh, you served the Gambia Armed Forces, and then you left. Now you joined politics. What is the reason behind? What motivated you to actually join politics? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jeffang. And um, first and foremost, let me welcome you to my little abode in Brookwood, and also to say how delightful I am um, with this honor and privilege. Um, and also, thank you very much for asking me this very important question. I did not leave the armed forces. I was retired in 2011 and redeployed into the uh, foreign service. My first. Uh, uh, this was James days. This was yes, exactly. This was in the the, the, the period of Jamme. Yeah, exactly. And my I was posted to the embassy of the Republic of the Gambia in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as the deputy head of mission. And uh, from there, in 2017, I was also recalled. You know, after you know some time, I spent nearly six uh, years in Saudi Arabia because I was the deputy head of mission, and after promoted as the Consul General in Jeddah, also responsible for Hajj and other matters related to the Gambia and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. In 2017, I was recalled, and uh, when I came back, I was here for about a uh, few months, and I was redeployed again to the Russian Federation. That was where I served for about uh, a year plus, and that was where this uh, opportunity came. While I was away, I was uh, nominated by uh, a political party, a well-established political party called Gambia Action Party. And as a result, because I was, um, I was at the time working for the government of the day, I had to resign my position. Okay. And uh, that was what, exactly what I did. I resigned on the 4th of October 2019 and waited for my return. And I came back um, to the Gambia, I think about uh, two weeks ago. Politics um, is something that has not been my passion. It has never, I've never been known to be involved in any political you know, activities because I spent most of my youthful time in the armed forces of the Gambia. And at that time, my job did not allow me to participate in politics. I was uh, a security officer. My responsibilities at that, at that time was to protect the lives and properties of the Gambia and also the territorial integrity of the Gambia. And therefore, I divorced completely that responsibility from politics. I was not those officers that you will see at the political you know, scenes. Yeah, why now? Now, because if you look at my background, um, I am a, a medical officer. You know, I'm a science student. So actually, I wanted to become a doctor. So I used the School of Nursing and Midwifery to be the, um, the springboard uh, to become a doctor. And when I finished in 1992, I worked at the RBTH and later at Fadikunda Health Center. It was there that I was approached and I, I shifted to the Ministry of Defense. So that is one of, I'm a medical officer, a security officer, and also, you know, a diplomat. So put these things together is an advantage. So that's why when, they, when I was approached, when I was uh, nominated, and I put in all these things together, plus the consultation that I had with the party leaders, my family, my parents, and friends and loved ones. I was advised to give it a shot. Politics, because we feel that there is a, there is a need for um, people like myself and other you know, people with wealth of experience to be involved in the running of the affairs of the Gambia, because otherwise we will leave it in the hands of people that we will not definitely like. Okay, so um, you said you were still serving the government when you were nominated to lead the Gambia Action Party. It's like you were, you were, you turned to be an opposition in the very system you were serving. Actually, I don't know if you, you are entitled to your own opinion, but I don't think it is exactly that way because um, the, this is how it came about. It was on Monday that I received my nomination from the party. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I made a decision. And that was after consultations with the people who matter as far as that decision is concerned. So on, 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 on the following the Thursday, I accepted the nomination, and on Friday, I resigned. 
So uh, was I an opposition? Okay. If that is the case, yes, I was an opposition. Maybe, maybe for the, within that period, before your resignation, between your uh, nomination and your uh, resignation, I think you, you could you couldn't do, don't you see yourself as an opposition? I, 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 I don't want to I don't want to put it that way, but uh, I I will respect your, your your opinion though. And um, what happened was that when the announcement uh, when the announcement uh, was made. Um, Government wrote to me and they asked me to make some clarifications with regards to with regards to that. Okay. You know, and and I made that clarification that this is something that came my way and I'm 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 considering it. You know, so I did not just you know uh, concluded that yes I'm going to accept this. That I had done a lot of things, including even consult consulting the the people at the Oval Office, just to sound their opinion. You know, but but it did not bear fruit because. Um, Immediately, the, the interpretation there was a little bit awkward. So I felt that, hey, I'm on my own. Let me just try and deal this, you know, handle this thing the way I'm supposed to handle it. So yes, if you said I'm an opposition in the very system that I, I worked for, yeah, how many people are not opposition in this very system that they're working for? So, but if you, if, you, if, you, if you call it that way, I will not. And then how, what was their reaction, the final reaction from, you said they sought clarification from you. You did clarify. What was their reaction? Yeah, exactly. I did clarify. I did clarify that this is an, uh, an opportunity that came my way, and I'm considering it at the time. What they wanted me to do at the time was to write to the you know, newspapers to tell them that the, um, the nomination wasn't actually true, which um, after my consultation, I, I, I realized that, no, it was really true. So I, I wanted to I wanted to engage them. It was the government that wanted you to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Which, which to be specific, which department? The protocol department at the at the at the office of the president. And how did you feel about that? Yeah, I felt offended. I felt offended because I, if things of that nature, if things of that kind um, should come your way, you know, there is a need for you to talk to the people. I'm not an opposition. You know, I I work diligently for for this particular government. I, I, w I put my everything out for this government. And, and, and for me to, you know, um, sort audience with them or sort their, their, their advice on, on the issue and, and being treated that way, I felt offended. And that is why also it was very quick and, and easy for me to take the decision. Yeah. So you were quoted in the newspaper saying that you, nobody should trust this government. The yes. call. In fact, you did not say government. You generalize it. You said the coalition. Leader. Exactly. Why, why did you make? Yeah, that exactly. Statement? And 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 I'm going to. This is going to be a campaign slogan. This is going to be our campaign slogan. Why did you put up that? Yeah, exactly. We don't have to trust the coalition members anymore. Look, um, you. We all here. The coalition came together. It's about what? How many political parties? About ten or eight of them. We have seven political parties and one independent. Independent. Yeah. Exactly. They came together to form a coalition, and they had their, you know, requirements. The requirement is that the president has to be an independent. The requirement is that they will be there for three years, and after the three years, the president has to stand aside. And there are core responsibilities that they assign themselves. I'm just giving you the, the, the brief of some of the agreement. I'm not going to give you all of that, but I'm sure you knew better. You know, so the the, the coalition members came together, and 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 the presidential candidate fulfilled all the criteria that they put in place. Now, two, they had core responsibilities. The core responsibility, the four that I probably will mention, are the TRRC, CRC, the uh, SSR, that is the security sector reform, and also civil sector reform. Mm -hmm. These are core responsibilities. And to them, they believed that this was, this were possible. They would be able to do, carry out these responsibilities within the, four, the, within the three years period. Why, why, why should we believe them? During the political the campaign, they went out to the Gambian people and, to, and told them that we are going to um, leave the, the, the transition period for a period of three years. And after that three years, we will be able to accomplish all these three core responsibilities. And once we've done that, we are going to hand over, we're going to organize an election. And then we're going to hand over to the next government that is going to continue the administration of the country. You know, these are responsible people. These are trusted people. They've been in, the politi in politics in this country for a very long time. And, and we took their words. We took their promises. And that was why massively people voted for them. And, and for them to turn around and, and come up with fallacies or excuses 
you know, <laughs> that it is unconstitutional in itself is a deception. You talked about a few things that um, uh, that regards to the C uh, SSR reform. You talked about TRRC, you talked about CR CRC. I think these are areas that actually achieved a lot. The government can, can be proud enough to say we have did a lot. I'm not actually, not much on the you know, uh, SSR, but then these two uh, areas, I think they've, what is your assessment on that? No, the, the, the issue is not how much or what, how far they've gone. The, 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 the responsibility, the task is, in three years they should be able to exhaust, not only exhaust merely, exhaust fully these, three, these four you know, responsibilities. But what happened? You know, uh, along the line, we, we, kudos for what? To give, them, to give them a credit for what? What have they achieved? The TRRC, because we have seen, we've, we've heard allegations and, and, and we've seen the, uh, the uh, Financial Management Commission. You know, th those are things that we, we, have to, we have to give them credit when they have exhausted. I mean, exhausted. So for oh, now, no, no credit? No credit for now, no at all. Because um, we're giving them credit in piecemeal. And that is not us. We don't stand to um, give credit to people who deceived us. You know, look, the most important thing about leaders is integrity. That moral principle, that honesty, if you compromise that as a leader, then you become nothing. And that is what we have sown. And that is why we are saying that, look, don't trust the coalition members anymore, including the president. The president has lost that integrity. He is not an honest person. He does not stand by his words. And these are some of the things that are difficult for Gambians to, to, to hear and to listen. And that is why we are saying young people have to take the mantle of, their, of this country. Let us be involved and take our country. We know our problems in this country as young people. And we should be able to offer solutions to those problems. And then that is why Gambia Action Party is coming. We do not just coin our name just out of nothing or for pleasure. It is an action-oriented party. We, we, have, we have seen the problems in this country. To be diplomatic about it, one important, one important problem in this country is leadership. We do not have leaders. We, we, we're not talking about, we, we're not into politics because we want to become politicians. We want to fill that leadership vacuum. How do you want to fill that? You, exactly, we want to. That is why we came up with a, with a candidate whose leadership has been tested. Who, like if, you, if, you, if you, for instance, like... That is you. From, that's exactly. How is your leadership? Can you justify how yeah, exactly. your leadership I, has been I tested? want you to take a trail on, on where I have served in the, armed, in the armed forces or even before the armed forces. While I was in the medical, if you go to Fajikunda Health Center, my name has used to be um, a household name in that area because I stood by the people who were in need because that was my responsibility. You know, Fajikunda Health Center used to be um, a health center that served a very large community. And I have served that place diligently. And when I was there, I knew what I did there. If you go to the military today and you ask the people in the military, that is where I spend most of my youthful age or youthful time. If you're in the military today, they will tell you who I am. But just to tell you, like you've just asked, I have assisted the voiceless people. I stood by the defenseless. I make sure that my responsibility as a military officer at the time was to make sure that I protect Gambia. And I did that fully. I did that fully. Like typical how, how, did you, how did you do that? Typical because, example. Because the, the thing I was, I'm going to ask you about, if you say you did you know, diligently in the yeah. army, yeah. Um, we passed through a very horrible 22 years you know, of your Jamesh rule. And then you served this government. You were in the army. Most of these culprits, or maybe perpetrators, or alleged perpetrators, um, who appeared before the TRRC today, they are soldiers. And then you serve this very system. What was your role in trying to cleanse that attitude? Is it the armed forces that I served, the armed forces that I served, that I belonged to, that I worked for, that I was enlisted into, is the Gambia, Gambia Armed Forces. The Gambia Armed Forces has core responsibilities. And those responsibilities are to protect lives and properties of the Gambian people and also the protection of the territorial integrity of the Gambia. That was why I joined the military. But as a professional, as a medical professional, I was the head of the medical corps for a very long time before I shifted my corps from medical to infantry. And while I was in the military, from the time that I entered the military, when I was enlisted into the military, until the time that I was retired, I was all the time at the at where things, my, my position, my responsibilities, alhamdulillah, I was at that, that level where things are discussed that affects 
lives and properties, lives of Gambian people and also members of the armed forces. So, oh, I, you, I, could, you couldn't change things. Like I, I did. I did. I did in my own way. In my own way, I did a lot of things, and I will try to enumerate some of them if time will permit us. Um, while I was serving the armed forces, I served as, as like, like I said earlier on, as the as the head of the medical corps. And while I was in the medical, uh, while I was there as a member, I tried to create opportunities for some of the older soldiers who were there. But you know, if you know the cadre, as auxiliary nurses, to create schools for them to you know upgrade their their, their, their education status. Like some of them went to RN. Some of them went to SCN. You know, we, I did that during my time. The other thing is that when I shifted core to the, um, the infantry, and this is where I, my, my career sought. This is where I, I definitely enjoyed the military because I started that by, you know, holding responsibilities. I was in, in, in charge of troops. I was in charge of battalions. I was in charge of uh, formations. So at that time, my message at the time was this, we have to change the mindset. We have to make sure that we help the soldiers to understand their responsibilities. To have the basic training as an infantry soldier wasn't enough, or to go for a course abroad and come back will not be enough. But the person who is the leader must, must possess certain qualities, certain traits of a leader that will help others to be able to emulate and also understand their responsibilities better. So my responsibility at the time was to change the mindset of the people. A typical example, while I was a captain, this was a challenging moment. I was posted at Farafene. When I was at Farafenia, this was where I had exhibited, you know, um, classic leadership styles. I just, I'm not bragging, but that was what exactly what happened. While I was there, Farafenia used to, Farafenia is far away from this part of the Gambia. Yeah. It's, in, it's a North Bank. And in those days, Farafenia used to be a punishment camp, like soldiers who commit minor crimes here. If they want to punish them, what they do is they send them to Farafenia you know, for, for punishment. They will be there for a few weeks or months and then before, you know, they, 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 they return. Or sometimes they will be there for the rest of their career. So when I went there, that was the mindset that I first and foremost changed. And I also tried, when I went there, I knew that this place is, is dry, dusty, and the morale there was very, very low. So I used myself as a guinea pig to make sure that we live up to expectation. We, might, we have to make sure that uh, the, the, the area that our, our responsibilities covers we have to make sure that there is one security, people are protected, people can go about their businesses without being harassed or without, without any fear. And we were able to do that because first and foremost what I did was to make sure that I try to work with the soldiers and lead them, not telling them to go and I find them there. I led them and that way we were able to do a lot of stuff. You know, when I went there, there were certain things that I was told that were impossible. For when it was dry, dusty, I tell him, hey, look, we have to plant trees here. We started planting mango trees. They say mango trees cannot, you know, they, you, you cannot plant them here. I said, okay, I know the place is dry, but we'll come up with something. And then we were able to, today, if you go to Farafenia Barracks, the, it is one of the cleanest barracks in, in the whole of the armed forces. So, but, okay. But yeah, exactly. And, and when I was, other responsibilities, you and I knew very well that Denton Bridge, the checkpoint has been there, you know, for a very long time. Denton Bridge checkpoint, if you mistakenly just cross that checkpoint, you know, without stopping there, Usually you will you will be you will receive that kind of thing with with very harsh. You know. what, can, what kind of thing? Yeah, like for instance, the checkpoint at, at Denton Bridge. You have to stop there, and your vehicle is supposed to be searched or you you to be you to be you know uh, questioned before you are allowed to to move, especially at night. While I was the state guard commander, what I did was because I knew that there were some people who became victims of that kind of thing. They mistakenly or you know deliberately went to checkpoint and they did not stop. A lady, I'm sure, was fired at the checkpoint here in, in the Gambia. And Denton Bridge has been an impediment. It has been a problem. What did you do about that? Exactly. What I did was this. Um, if the president, the former president, when he traveled um, in those days, it's the state guard commander that will you know, spend the night at the state guard. So one evening, I deliberately calculated that if I'm going home, if I'm going to state guard to spend the night there, I'm not going to stop at the checkpoint because I wanted to test my soldiers. What means do they have to challenge me or to challenge any other person who is going to fall a victim of, of that kind of thing? So what I did was I just passed, just to stop him. And by the time I knew, the soldiers fired, pop, pop. You know, the soldier fired about three shots. So I was like, okay, this is the only alternative that you have. So I reversed, I went to the soldier, I asked him, you don't recognize your commander's vehicle? He said, no, sir. He said, okay, you, you, how many rounds did he fire? He said, well, three rounds. Then I called the, 
the, the commander, his immediate commander, and I said, this soldier has shot at me, and now bring another soldier. I'm going to punish him at state guard. So I took him there, and I punished him. This was a calculated move that I did. So I wanted to also test my soldier. What other alternatives do they have? In, 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 instead of firing, what other, other, other chances do they have to be able to um, stop that kind of thing, or people losing their life at the checkpoint? So the following morning, I did not want this message to be delivered or to, be, to reach the president by anybody else. So the following morning, once we usher him into his office, I do normally daily conduct my briefing. So during my briefing, I told him, that, Your Excellency, I did this, like I've just narrated. And then he was reading the newspaper. He dropped the newspaper. He said, what? You wanted to kill yourself? But that wasn't the objective. The objective was to make sure that the people are protected, to make sure that people are not humiliated at the checkpoint, to make sure that you know, that place becomes an easy go for anybody that wants to you know, go to Banjul at any time. I have received numerous complaints at that checkpoint. So when I met him that morning, I told him that this was what I did. And I also you know, suggested to him that, look, you have outriders here. Can you give me three of your out outriders? These are BMW outriders. And very rare do we have vehicles in this country that can you know, outrun those you know, motorbikes. They are huge ones and, and, and very fast. So he said, what are you going to do with it? I said, I'm going to place them at Denton Bridge. One to cover this, the, the, the going, and the other uh, to cover this other side. He said, OK, that is, that is, that is good. Tell, then Jesus was the, the IGP. You know, he told me, tell Jesus also to give you another, motor, another motorbike. In those days, there used to be three vehicles at the Denton Bridge, three uh, motorbikes at the Denton Bridge. And these are stopped completely. You, you have never had any incident at Denton Bridge since that thing happened. Because any motorbike, motorbike that failed to stop at that checkpoint, the soldiers will not fire. Instead, they will chase them. So I, did this, thing, I did this thing. I did this thing purposely to protect Gambian people. I did this thing purposely to make sure that our soldiers' behavior is controlled. When I was at Farafene, I dismissed a soldier because of his interaction, his behavior. And me, you know, um, probably this is an interview. You don't know me. But yeah, when but I was then, in the military. Yeah, but then what I'm saying, yeah. um, you, you, you did your part. Right. You did your part. Right. But then you continue to serve the government. Exactly. That, that was questioned. That uh, whose uh, human rights record has been questioned repeatedly right. by local NGOs, right. by even private citizens, right. by international bodies. Right. Yet you continue to serve that government. Right. You know, you know um, my, my belief was, was this. You know, you, you don't have to give up on when situations are tough. Okay? I, I knew that I, there was a responsibility that I had. My responsibility was what I have just, as I have just outlined. You know, I wasn't in the military to bully anybody. And that is why I have a track record. You can do a background check on me while I was in the military. My responsibility was not to listen to people outside. My responsibility was, I was a leader in the armed forces, and I want to make sure that you know, our behavior is enviable. I wanted to make sure that our But behavior, you admit that things were not going right. No, no, no. Um, if, if things were not, if things were, I, I have done my part, I have spoken. No, I'm just saying you were aware of that. Things were not going right. But, but things in were terms, also going right at some I, point. I mean, in terms of respect of human rights. In no, terms of, because we've seen in the army. From, from whose from who's point of view? I mean, we've seen that army is, a, uh, this uh, jungle is a branch of the army. No, 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 not a branch of the army. Is it, this is what, I, I just want to make this point on record. The, it's not a branch of the armed forces. The armed forces composed of men and women who, who love this country and they are ready to put their life on the But the jungler section is, no, is, the jungler composed, is just composed a minute fraction. The, you see, the problem is this. It's composed by members no, of no, the No, the, the, the thing is this. It is not the armed forces that had contributed, if there had been any, any, any you know, um, misrule or whatever you want to call them. It wasn't the armed forces. The perpetrators this was a system. It was a system. It was not because Jame was Jame originated or Jame had armed forces around him, so he could he use them anyhow. No, why was I not used? I was a commander at the state guard. Why wasn't I used to 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 bully people or to kill people or to beat people? Why wasn't I used? So the problem was this: some of us, our responsibility, our responsibilities also include to change the mindset of the people because me, when I was going to the state house, I already knew the problem. So the, the, the whole thing is, your conclusion is you remain in the army to serve the Gambian forces just to change the mindset, despite knowing that things were not going right. No, no, no. I did not, conclusion? not only, not, don't, that, on, I, 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 I just, I will not agree, say, just only. 
I had a responsibility and I had troops, I had formations under me. And then I, we, it is also part of our responsibilities to remind the, the, the soldiers that civilians are not supposed to be our enemies. We're there, in fact, to protect them. So if there had been any um, uh, uh, mismanagement or if there had been any um, um, brutalities, you know, it, it did not, it, it did, it, that has nothing to do with some of us and many other officers and, and, and soldiers who are in the armed forces. It is just a minute fraction of the armed forces, people who have lost track, who have given up on life, people who, whose, whose behavior we are questionable in every manner. And, 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 and if you want to qualify their behavior and attribute it to, you know, to the armed forces, then I will refute that completely. Okay. Because that is not... So let, let me take you through this perception. This is the general perception in the Gambia with regards to the army as uh, to, be, to elect somebody who has a background in the Gambia, in, in army, and um, as president of the Gambia. Already you have Jame, who is a very bad example to many Gambians. Uh, how do you think people, Gambian people, should trust you as a former member of Gambia Armed Forces to give their voice, to give their powers, and then entrust you with the country's leadership? Mr. Jeff, um, the thing is this, you are a journalist and I respect your profession and I respect this particular question that you have just asked me. Um, to answer your question, the fact that Jame was an ex-army officer does not make him to rule this way bad or good. Jame's time, he led this country and then he formed a system around him. I will give you examples, if you, if you allow me. I will so, no, not to go into the example, my question is, why do you, how do you convince Gambian people? Exactly, and I will do that. Seeing Jammeh. Yeah, exactly, and I will do that. The example he, he left in the, in the country, yeah, I will, you know, I will. that has tempted the whole Gambia armed forces. No, it, it, not it, only it, the armed forces as a setup, but yeah. then even the individuals, yeah, exactly. like yourself. Yeah. How do you convince Gambian people yeah. as to be their leader? And exactly, that is what I'm trying to say. Jamel's background as a military officer did not make him a bad person or a good person. Jamel led a system, and that system was what, you know, had been bad or good. If, if the people that has confessed at the, um, the TRRC alleged that the former president was like this or like that, does not necessarily mean that when Bojan comes, he is going to be like that or, you know, other way around. What I want to say is this. If, for instance, a teacher... I want to give you this analogy. If a teacher is, becomes a president and becomes a dictator, does that mean that any teacher who becomes the president will become a dictator? No. That is no. Now, if a farmer becomes a president and he becomes a dictator, does that mean that every farmer that becomes a president will become a dictator? And the answer is no. Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe was one of the finest presidents in, in Africa, the most educated. At the time, he was a teacher. I'm sure you, must, you knew that. He was a president. If you go to go Zimbabwe at the time, when Roman Mugabe was there, the, the Zimbabwean people will tell you that he was a dictator. Doesn't necessarily mean that any teacher from Zimbabwe who becomes a president will become a dictator. No. The thing is, let us not mislead Gambian people. Let us tell them how it is. And that is the reality. And what I'm telling you, that is the fact. The fact is this. The fact that somebody had been a military officer does cannot make him a bad person or a good person. I am a good person and I serve my country diligently. Now, let us look at around, let's look around the countries that are moving forward, in, especially in Africa. You know, those are typical examples. The typical examples are there for everybody to see. And that is what is going to give me edge over anybody else who is racing to state house. My background as a military officer is an advantage. It's an added advantage. Right. Do a background check on me. When I was in the military, my leadership skills were tested. I'm an honest person. I'm a sympathetic person. I do empathize with people. I stood for people. And I fought for people. And I will, it, it is just a natural evolution. My involvement is in politics because I have done things for people that um, I will continue to do. So for me to be able to reconcile, for me to be able to consolidate these genes that I have, you know, registered in the past, the best platform that I can create is to be in politics. Because if I was able to build, construct maybe um, a classroom for your village, and I'm able to build a mosque for, for my community, 
if I'm able to contribute in the, 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 with the women garden by fencing the, their garden, if I'm able to give a token to, a, to women groups to be able to use it as a revolving loan, if I'm able to um, help needy people to be able to uh, move from point A to B to address their problems, you know, those are gains that I have registered. So for me to be able to consolidate those ones, the best platform that I can use is in politics. But just to come back to your question, please, the, the best military, the best leaders in, this, in, in the world today, especially in Africa, that history has recorded, are military officers. You know, the, the country that we're modeling today... Black was the most feared. Too. The, the most feared because the way they came. I do not believe in military coup d'etats. I was in the military. I was in that position of helm of matters as far as the armed forces is concerned. Not once have I been involved in any you know, abortive, milita abortive coup d'etats here. Because I believe that is not what Gambian people want. We want, if I, am, if I want to go into politics, let me do it the way I am doing it. I never believe in coup d'etats. Let, let me just answer this question, please. Um, the best leaders in Africa today are military, are military leaders. The country that we are modeling today as the champions of democracy and also, you know, um, um, salvaging their people from from position of decadence to 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 um, to good or, or or whatever you want to name it. Do you have an it's example? In, it's in, it's in, yeah, exactly. It's in Rwanda. If you knew about the history of the guy in Rwanda, he not only was he a military officer, but he was also you know part of a rebel movement. You know that um, Bogagami was part of the, the 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 rebel movement that installed. Museveni in, 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 in power. And then he went back to his country with the remnants of his guerrillas. And then they, they took the country from nothing to where they are today. Today in Rwanda, today in Rwanda, they, they're producing smartphones. Mm -hmm. Thousand parts and all of them are, are manufactured there. You know, if you go to Botswana, Botswana has been the, the model as far as, as far as democracy is concerned and development is concerned. I was there on a study tour and I knew the country inside out. I can tell you the leaders there are military officers. If you go to Egypt, uh, Ethiopia, if you go to Egypt, if you go to Sarah Leon here, our neighbors here. Well, Sarah Sarah, Leon, Egypt is not the best example. And anyway, no, 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 but, but I'm yeah. telling you, if, if they are not best examples, yeah. but I'm giving you an example in Ethiopia, these are military leaders yeah. who have lived, who have served their people, who have who've, 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 um, raised the flags of their uh, respective countries. And this is how I am also. Do a background check on me. You will find out that I am, I am that, those okay. type of military leader, right. leaders that are also going to contribute by redeeming their people from um, a, a position of decadence, from a position of stagnation to um, a, a developed country. I want to take you to the civil leadership now. Um, you are from a background that is um, UDP, that, are, that is a major stronghold for United Democratic Party. Where? I'm talking about the Brufoot here. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. You know, you have your gap has gap has their leader in Brufoot. Yeah. How do you convince? What is the level? What is the um, what is the hope? What is the aspiration? Is it, what I, is the advantage at your disposal? To I, get I don't think here I don't think I don't think that is um, the right the, the right um, you know assessment. The assessment in Brufoot here, these are independent people. These are honest people. The people in Brufoot will choose which candidate they are going to support. To say that Brufoot is a strong UDP... Yeah, but supporting the United Democratic no, Party still maintains support, their No, I am, I am telling you, supporting you know, any political party whatsoever, supporting any political party, the fact that I am from Brufoot, this is my home. This is my, my town. This is my people. I live here, they own me, I own them, we are related. Does not necessarily mean that that is the type of politics... And you think politics, you can break the ground? That, that is the type of politics that we, we want to divorce from. The politics is not supposed to be where one comes from. The politics has to be real. We, we, we are trying to deviate from that politics of deception. And that is why I always want to hammer that we cannot trust the coalition, all of them, in totality. Our country deserves better. Our people deserve better. So the people in Brufu now will decide. But I can tell you that no political party will come here and fool our people because we're trying to enlighten them, for them to understand. How are you enlightening them? We're trying to make them understand that, you know, it does not matter how long you've been an, as an opposition. And the, the opposition leader has to be eloquent. The opposition has, leader has to be honest. The opposition leader has to be somebody who has this country at heart. The opposition leader has to have an agenda. You have to have a, 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 a manifesto that is sellable, that the government people can listen. Not our people. We don't want leaders that will stand in front of us and start threatening us. We do not care if you've been in politi politics for the past how many years. It doesn't matter. The people in Brufoot will decide. We are 
are people like people in Nyomi, like people in Wuli, like people in Sami, like people in Yua. Do you know those part of the, the regions? I, re I worked in, in Farafene, and my catchment area is from North Bank, Faraf uh, Bara, to, to, to Koina, when I was in working at Far Farafene, on both sides. So I track the length and breadth of this country, and my family is spread also on the length and breadth of this country. I knew that part very well. And they know you very well? Uh, not, not very well. I will not put it that way. But if you echo my name anywhere in those regions and refer to and reference it to the time that I was there, most people who, most people will remember me. So to say that Burfood is a stronghold of UDP, Burfood is not a stronghold of UDP. So we are drawing closer to the end of this interview. But then um, let me ask you this question. You talked about, um, um, you talked about uh, dignity, you talked about you know, trust in the coalition leadership. You said you'd lack trust. Nobody should even trust them. But then considering how you yourself came into power, how you get the leadership of Gambia Action, Action Party, Party, right? You know, it was just based on nomination. You know, nobody sees, no media witness, the election, the Congress of leadership. How democratic is that process? The process was very democratic. You see, um, we have to be very careful. If you if you're going to criticize the process in which we did our nomination, it was democratic. We we had a we have an executive, and this executive is composed of men and women, of men and women of Gambia. They are all, you know, uh, people who are sound veteran politicians, youth, you know, men and women, you know, and they all know what they want for this country, you know. So the 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 um the process wasn't like it was. Uh, you know, in camera or in house, you know, kind of affairs. It was transparent. It was debated. It was uh, something that um, we, the, the the members, after all the scrutiny, after all the background checks, because these are some of the things that we are we we are we we are focusing on. It was based on those, you know, um, uh, discussions that they finally accepted that this particular person will be our our, our flag bearer. We. We, we have to be very careful, careful in the sense that, you know, let us not put emphasis on the process. There is no Congress, there is no, you know, IEC responsibility, IEC responsibility, IEC mandate, that you have to go to Congress to nominate your flag bearer. No, but uh, just, uh, just no. for a best, best practice. No, 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 those are not best practices. Mm. Those, those are not best practices. That's your view. The best, the best practices was, why did the coalition go to a Congress? Yeah, they did. The coalition measure did not go to a congress. They did. No, they did not go to a congress. There was a convention. No, there was a convention. Was exactly. And then uh, election took place. Yeah, exactly. And how, 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 exactly. That was, that was how it, but they did not go to a congress. They did not go to a congress. So you can, I, I, I that, that is to, actually what I, I meant I, by yeah, congress. That, that is a typical example. That is a very good way of putting it. The thing is this. Let us not put emphasis on the process. Let us put emphasis on the product. Who is going to come? Yes. Okay. For the, for the sake of agreement, let me agree with you that they, they've gone to Congress or a convention, or whatever you named it. But what is the product? Let us assume that it was democratic. But what is the product? Today, we, they have given us a president who cannot be relied on. It's the Gambian people. No, no, but that, you, that, you, no, 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 I think no, no, to be no, fair no, to the no, coalition no, leaders, no, you blame no, the Gambian no, people no, for no, giving I'm not, us. I am not. I am not. I will not. <laughs> I am not. You don't believe that it's the Gambian people that gave us the Adam Abaro? No, 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 no. The Gambian there. people did not give us the Adam Abaro. So who do you blame now? The coalition. But how? Uh, but, but the I... chance, the opportunity was given to Gambian people. Yes. At least, you know, um, good number how, of How was it given to the Gambian? I mean, good number of representation of, uh, of every region of this country. Right. Every political party. Right. You know, gathered. And then they voted. For? They voted for who did the well, that is at the tail end of the, that was at the tail end of the process. So that yes, so that was at the tail at end of the process. It's a due process. So that shows that our, our, what I'm trying to let you understand, I'm enlightening mm -hmm. you, that Congress is not the only mode or the only platform okay. that you can nominate flag bearers. Flag bearers that is an internal party affairs. It does not have anything to do with Congress or those are just practices that no, we but we've do. seen. We've seen in America they do. They go for primaries. So, so that is and, a, then, look, and then these are know, party leaders. Are you? Are you? I mean, these from, are these are presidential uh, leaders. So, so we candidates. should. So, so, so the three years people should be given the the, the uh, how to call it again the the, the lancing to go and protest. Let me give you. Let me no. give you that question. You make your assessment. Ex exactly. So this is the problem. Now, if if you now giving me an, an example of America, America is the biggest democracy in the world. 
Now today, Donald Trump, you remember when he promised? No, no I just said that. I just said that America. No, you said that. Why, why not? Why not? To, why not? Sorry, why not Guinea Bissau? Why not uh, Senegal? Why? Why America? America's democracy, America's understanding. Because so they are the one who are. Let's take Senegal. Okay, for Senegal, like for instance, if you, Macky Sall had, you know, promised them anything, if he had told them that he was going to give them, uh, going, going to lead them three years, by force he will step down. If if he had promised them that he was going to bridge Bara and 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 uh, Bara and Banjul, by force he will do that. You cited America. Donald Trump said that he was going to fence between Mexico and, and, and America. And what is the result today? They are making sure that he fulfilled that promise. You see, the problem is this. You, you are a young man. So you, 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 you are a young man. You are contesting the fact that you should not have, you should have actually gone for Congress when you were elected as GAP leader. You are contesting that fact. No, I, what I'm saying is, is the fact that the political parties, whatever mode, whatever you know, uh, way that they choose to, to elect their leader, it, their internal matter. And, and if you want to scrutinize it, scrutinize it. But ours was democratic. Ours followed all the protocols. Ours was also, you know... Um, who did the background check? Oh, when yeah? you say background checks were done, who, who did that? The people, the executive, the people who are responsible. Was it done or... It's like the candidates. The candidates were not asked to submit their... Which candidates? I mean, those who, want, those who wish to be the gap leader, they, yeah. were they allowed to submit their interest? So, so that, is, that is happening I'm where? I'm asking whether that happened. So that is happening where? No, I'm, I'm asking whether that, that happened. So the, you, mean, you mean you have to, we, somebody has to dictate to us to, to no. say that, you know... I'm asking, did you do that? What, did, what, you, did you submit your interest to the parties? To I, I'm, not, I'm, not supposed to, I, I'm not supposed to submit my interest. Like I said earlier on, politics isn't, so, isn't something that I personally want to indulge in. I just want to make this point very clear. I did not submit requests or ask anybody to make me a political leader. My background is there for everybody to see, okay? And, and, and you know, like your party, UDP, or, or, or maybe coalition, whatever, would, they, would all love, they would all love me to be, they would all love me to be in their party because I, I, I live a decent life in this country. I can brag that. So for us, you know, we are a, we are a political party with a difference. And I, and I just want to hammer this area once more, that you are a young person. And, 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 and the realities are this. I am not trying to criticize anybody here. I am telling you that we have to think outside the box. Business as usual is over. Politics of deception should be over. Let us not let, us not, um, let our leaders come and stand in front of us and, and tell us things that are impossible. Let us make them, let us hold them accountable. We are not going to allow that kind of thing to happen. If you're going to tell us something, we want to, we want to, see, we want to see results. And that is why our name is Gambia Action Party, not by coincidence. And, and then you have not asked me our plans, our, our, how we want to develop this country, how we want to help young people. I actually, actually asked that to, question. How we want to help, the, how we want to you know, rejuvenate. And, and, yeah, so and maybe we sure don't that, have time. But yeah, then exactly. I did ask you a question. Exactly. Why, why, why do you think Gambia needs to vote for exactly, you? Exactly. These are some of the things that I we're talking about. Question. In this country, electricity is a problem. We, we, we are stagnated. Our development is stagnated simply because we do not have leadership in this country. And not of the, none of the coalition members can bring us any kind of development here. We do not believe in, in economic models that, cannot, that has never worked in any part of the world. We, don't, we do not believe in telling, putting us in the office before we can do something for you. Those are days that have gone. We want to make sure that people speak to us, they talk to us and tell us tangibly that we'll be able to do A, B, C, D. For instance, in this country, you know, the, we look at the energy sector. It has been, it has been you know, erratic for how many years? You know, 54 years to be precise. You know, Gambia Action Party is saying this thing. You know, these are not something that I am not new as far as the, um, the energy sector is concerned. I brought in investors here to be able to complement government in terms of providing us energy. I brought in people from Saudi Arabia, Sweden, and other places to, to, to beef up the, the energy crisis in this country. We, we identify, I have told every office to make sure that they give us the platform for us to be able to establish renewable energy. This is what is going to move us forward, okay? Energy has been a problem in this country yeah, for a very long time. How and do you want to change that? You know, that's what I'm saying. We are going to make sure that, you know, um, if you go there, you probably will be told that if you bring, if you, if, you, if, you, if you go to the um, maybe Gambia Investment Board or Ministry of, uh, Ministry of Trade, they will, they, the thing that they will tell you is that, hey, don't even bother to go into that area. Because you know why? The IMF and other donors, not donors, partners, 
who, who assisted for us to have generators that are meant for, for factories in the Gambia, you know, uh, have agreed with the government on very, very stiff policies. The policies are that it is a no-go area. If you come with an investor, you, there is no way that they, they will accommodate you. Hey, look, we have seen this thing in developed world. So how, how do you want to do, exactly. address this problem? Yeah, that is, that is what, what plans, that's what, tangible that, plans for the, us. The, the tangible uh -huh. plans are uh -huh. that if we want to move forward, we have to have sufficient and affordable electricity. And for us, we want to partner with partners of the Gambia for us to be able to have, to solve this problem permanently. And those people are there. Okay? Typical example is Russia, for instance. The last Russia-Africa summit, the, the president of the Russian Federation had erased all the debts, or he's ready to erase all the debts of, of the African countries. And the two, he is ready to even sell or ready to share the, the, the nuclear technology for them to be able to meet their energy crisis. This is a, this is a, 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 a huge, a huge you know, promise that African countries should capitalize on. Look, we, we have this problem for a very long time. None of these countries in the sub-region today has sufficient electricity. Even those biggest you know, countries, they're still struggling with electricity. And without sufficient electricity, we will not be able to have a good So you want system. to rely on the partners to actually boost And that is one of it. Because I'm going to give you another part that will help you to understand where we're coming from. Now, our health sector, health sector is kaput. The health sector is doomed. Look, the number of people that will trek between Banjul and Senegal recently is just unbearable. Our people are dying from ailments that Nobody died from those kind of sicknesses today in the world. Why? Because our health institutions are not there to meet the demands. How do you want to address that? Exactly. This is what we, we, we want to do. One of the things is that during Jamie's time, he has developed the infrastructure, like it or dislike it, because these are some of the things that some of you journalists don't want to hear. All that you want to hear is that we, have to, criticize, we, have, to, we have to criticize AI Jamie and criticize AI Jamie. But us, like, we, will, we will give credit where credit is due. Infrastructure was built. There were two hospitals that were built at the time, in Farafene and also in, in Buyam. What we are saying is that, hey, let us, re, let us overhaul the, the RBTH. Let us overhaul that hospital and then upgrade it to a standard that will be able to accommodate, able to treat, able to investigate, and able to perform any type of procedure. And this is what we are talking about. We are saying that the young people in this country constitute about 60% of our population. Let us make sure that we believe in young people. Let us make sure that we create an opportunity for them. Before you go and make an arrangement with a, a, a superpower to build us a factory at Tanji and at Sanyang and also in Gunjur, and giving them the lands into fish in our, in our waters, and, and, and abusing it, in fact, and abusing it, we are saying that why can't you just create an opportunity for the young people? Why can't you negotiate with our development partners to build us a factory here where it, the skill and knowledge will be transferred to our young people and we pay them good money? We pay them good money. Why can't we believe that agriculture is the breadbasket of this country? Why can't we go mechanized? Why can't we go mechanized? So and mechanization sure is it seems is to the, be... It, no, no, but it, it is the but solution. But then the, the fact is, I'm is not, no, I agree. And then every other person agrees that is the solution. The only problem is how do you do it? The way we do it is this. In this country, there are 60% of our young people. 60% of the country are young people. If you are able to hire, let's say, 2,000 people, 2,000 from those young people, give them basic knowledge about agriculture, just break them down from that, you know, um, Bagwe syndrome. Just give them that love for country, that love for, for people, understanding of why those kind of things are happening. I mean, 2,000 or 3,000. Give them good salary. You know, Sapo, Jahal, Pachar projects, do you know how they failed? They failed because the people who were working there knew that they were working for a big project. But the thing is, at the end of the day, they were paid $3,000 or maybe $2,000. At the end of the day, you know what happened? They used to steal parts of the tractors or the machines there and cross the border to sell them because they have to meet the, the needs of their family. But we are saying that, look, for us to be able to stop borrowing, for us to be able to stop any kind of thing, we take 2,000 young people, 3,000 young people, we give them good money. Maybe even in addition to that, you give them free medical care. Maybe in addition to that, you even give them free, you know, school, school, uh, free schooling to their kids. You are suggesting that? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm suggesting, yes. Yes, you are, you, you are suggesting. Is this part of your plan? This is part of our plan. You know, hey, let's think radical. The thing is that we choose River Gambia, not because we want to beautify our logo. Because we, 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 there, is a, there is an idea behind it. And this is the idea. The idea is that we don't have to base our agriculture on rain fed. 
We don't have to be continuous 54 years of our existence. We're still basing our agriculture on traditional farming, subsistence farming. The farming community are aging. And what we need to do is to complement it. We have to go mechanize. And it is not a big thing. When you think about mechanization, people think it is like um, you have to bring heaven on earth for, for us to realize this. No, it is not like that. It is the determination. It is the leadership. It is the foresight. And that is what is missing as far as this country is concerned. And the Gambia Action Party, this is the, the path that we want to take. Because we also want to reduce the unemployment. Tourism is another area in this country. Look, Gambia will go outside to sell, you know, uh, Gambia. Gambia Tourism Board or Gambia Tourism, uh, Ministry of Tourism will go out to sell Gambia. But what happened at the end of the day? When tourists arrive in this country, they spend money in Senegal and in Guinea-Bissau. This is what, and also in Kebab. Why? Because there are no attractions in this country. Abuko Nature Reserve. You know, years and years ago, we used to have, you know, wildlife there. And then we used to employ youth there. But look, I was in Saudi Arabia. You know, the, 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 the sanctuary, the animal sanctuary, is less than by far 100 meters square. Okay? Now, if you go there during the weekend, you see the number of people that, that patronize that place. It's just, and it brings employing youth young people, and it's also generating income for the ministry, uh, for the municipality, and also for the government. The Ministry of, for, ministry of Tourism said that they built 10, how to call it, 10 uh, 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 hotels in the country here. Where are 10 hotels in this country? Adam Barrow said that he built um, uh, 1,002 classrooms here. Where are, where are 1,002 classrooms here? Did you do a background check on that? He said he has fenced 500 schools in this country. Where? If you take 500 schools, including the private schools in this country, how many schools will be left? From here to Koina, 500 schools, because Burfoot here, all the schools here are fenced. So these are the type of politicians that we want to chase away from the political scene. These are the people that we cannot trust anymore. I don't want to stand here and tell you that when I am a president, I'm going to roof this country. I'm going to fence between us and Senegal. I'm going to make sure that every youth is employed. But we're trying to say that we want to mitigate the problem. The effect of this bad way, it is not the, the fault of the young people. How about the military that you came from? Exactly. This is the security in this country. You know the reason why this SSR is derailing? It is derailing. And your assessment on that? Yeah, my assessment the is that because they, are, they are dealing with wrong information. The, the fact that they are, they've gathered is, is wrong. It's not accurate. The, the, like the how? Yeah. Facts like the, how? You know, the thing is that um, the armed forces is not composed of Jola. The Jolas did not form majority in, in the armed forces. Not every member of the armed forces are, are, are... Is that a thought? Sorry? Is that a belief? No, I was one of the officers. One of the officers. If there are people in the armed forces today who had carried out, conducted um, selection, both officers and, and, and men in the armed forces, there will be few of them who had, who had carried out those kind of exercises more than me. There are very few of them. And I am telling you, I had a purpose at the time when I was carrying, when I was given those responsibilities. One of the responsibilities, responsibilities was to make sure that, you know, if we want to, you know, hire or enlist all the high school or the, all the graduates in the armed forces, you know, and then a situation, you know, comes, will you be able to use those people as your riflemen and stuff like that? So I, I, I thought that that was not going to be the best approach to, you know, um, um, create that kind of employment. So my, 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 you know, duty at the time was to make sure that anybody who comes and is a Gambian, the fact that you fulfill those criteria as that you are a Gambian, will make sure that you will employ you. And it does not matter where one comes from, the region. It does not matter one's tribe. So to tell me that Jolas for majority in the armed forces in the first place, it is wrong, too. You see, but who said that? The armed forces. The armed forces. That's why it is. Okay. It is. It is. I, I was. On, I was right? one of those people who had who had been victimized. Consoled. No, I've been victimized. Yes, victimized. But um, what I want to also say is this: the armed forces has been victimized. The armed forces has been stigmatized for for nothing, because the the assumption is that the leadership of the armed forces today had created that kind of scenario so that the president of the republic would be feared of the armed forces. But that wasn't true. People in the armed forces stood to make sure that there is change in this country. They put their life on guillotine. They make sure that there is change, or the, change, or the, 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 the decision of the government people is, is realized. And those men and women are in, the, are in uniform. So it is just the makeup of the current leadership that had just made that kind of um, you know, fear, or instilled that fear in the, in, the, in the presidency for them not to trust the, the Gambian people. 
The armed forces is composed of men and women who love this country and who are ready to protect this country. No, look, look, there are problems. There are problems. The problems are this. You know, we have seen now, you know, I was in armed forces, and there are certain about the curators that I never believed at the time that they were really curators. I thought it would, they were just fabrications. They were just trying to smear campaign, sort of, against certain members of the armed forces. Could it have, like? No, could it have, 2006 could it have, for instance. That was the, 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 the could it have that has wrecked the armed forces, mm -hmm. partial. Involved Even Ndurucham and, and, and others, the, the group of Ndurucham. You know, that, that was a coup d'etat that I could not believe that was a, it was a real coup d'etat. I did not know until TRRC, could you imagine? But the, the, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that um, the armed forces had also suffered, you know, internal issues. The way their promotions were, were done was one of the things, if you had tampered with the promotion of soldiers, you demoralized them. But the welfare was taken care of. You know, soldiers were traveling. And some of us were a few officers in the ranks who stood by the soldiers to make sure that they are trained regularly. You understand? Now, um, what is the problem? The problem with, that we have today is this. You know, we are not learning as, as Gambian, especially the presidency, especially the executive. They are not learning. Is the army learning? Army, yes. The, 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 the army is, you know, the, the right now. They don't even know the head and tail of the direction that they are going. The armed forces is not directing to any... any, any what is your assessment on uh, the, 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 the SSR? Because they, they actually working on downsizing the army. Why what do they have your, to downsize what, the armed what is forces? Your take Why do they have to downsize the armed forces? Why do they have to downsize? You, you, you have seen people here who confess that they were part of an abortive coup d'etat. You say the problem is this. Let us, let us be mindful. Let no, us the not, the let objective us. is to standardize No, 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 no. You cannot standardize. There is, no, 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 no. This is not the way to standardize. If you are in the process of standardizing, but meanwhile you are trying also trying to create Anyway, problems. that is quote unquote. Exactly. But if you are in the process of doing that, and meanwhile you are trying to create more problems. We have seen that coup, 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 uh, coup plotters are reinstated into the armed forces. Which armed forces in the world will do that? You confess. They confess that during, uh, during a T TRRC, that they were a part of a coup d'etat. So anybody who wanted to remove Yaya Jame, those are heroes. That is what we have paraded today, well, including your party. You know, well, whose um, party? You know, including your party. You know, um, which you one? Know, Can the, you name the, my party? You know, the thing is that the people, the people that, the people that are, are, are you know, scrutinizing what had happened during Jame's period, mm -hmm. must also be honest to Gambian people. Okay, if if you you if you if you if I'm going to criticize you and then you have done something good, let me be honest with you. Let me also, you know, highlight your good parts if I'm going to criticize you, okay? And what happened is that nowhere in the world, nowhere, not even the United States of America, even if you are a civilian, if you are a civilian and then you are involved in any coup d'etat, then you cease to operate or work for the government of the United States. So you in the Gambia, you do not support that agenda? I don't support it and I will never support it because it demoralizes the soldiers who are in the ranks. If you, are, if you confess that you, are, you took part in a military coup and then you are reinstated. And they justified that they were trying to end the tyranny. The tyranny. Ah, okay. So kudetas, kudetas that had happened in the past. That's their justice. So Yaya Jame's coup d'etat was not to end tyranny. Yaya Jame's coup d'etat was not to end corruption. Yaya Jame's coup d'etat was not to... No, the thing is that I... I Are I, you comparing I, the two? Because no, I Yaya, I, 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 I Yaya Jame's to. government has actually been accused. In fact, it has been confirmed look, by... Look, let, lot, us be, by let, let, us, let us Let us calm that down, brother. The, 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 the Mr. whole system... Mr. Jeffa, the whole I, system I was exonerate. actually killing miming. I cannot, I cannot exonerate to Yaya from the allegation that we have heard at the TRRC. That is not my position. My position is this. I am an honest person. I fear God. I am a Muslim. Okay? And that is what I know. I am not supposed to stand on this platform to deceive Gambians or lie to them. Not me. I have never lived that way in my life. And I will not start that in politics. If it is lies that is going to make people to go to state house, count Gambia Action Party out. We are going to live. We are going to live by example. We are going to tell the Gambian people the truth. The problem is this. Nobody has the moral authority to lead. Look, what is, what is, why didn't they overthrow Barrow? Barrow does not even believe Gambians can even provide security for him. This was the recipe for the coup d'etat in 1994. In 1994, what happened? Uh, we, we have all heard. Sana made the declare uh, how to call it. Uh, Sana explained everything. Now we have seen we have seen uh, the president today, yeah. three years down the line, does not even trust Gambians to 
We have a comic in the country up to now. What's your view? A comic? A comic, yeah. What are they doing in this country? What is their role here? What roles are they playing? What, what role are they playing? Look, let us believe our own people. That is what we are preaching. Let us believe our young people. Let us believe our security outfits. Police are doing tremendous job in this country. The immigrations are doing tremendous job in this country. But what do they have? The police, for instance. The police are killing themselves in the traffic day in, day out. The Ministry of, uh, Ministry of Interior had moved from Banjul to this uh, beautiful place. Meanwhile, the police are struggling to have batons and, and, and uh, tasers and, and pistols and, and other. So the, the, the concentration is mainly intervention. Intervention. What about the prevention? And that is why we have insecurity in this country. Gambia Action Party is saying that we're going to secure this place by using our gallant policemen and women, giving them the right equipment to make sure that they police the country day and night. But not only by you know, uh, intervening in crimes, but also preventing crimes. Look at the, the unfor unfortunate incident that happened at, uh, at Palmarima when a police officer had an encounter with uh, an innocent gentleman. And in the process, the gentleman lost his life. What, look at that police officer to, from head to toe. What did the government, government give to that? Uh, what, did they, what did they give him, that police officer, for him to be able to execute his duties professionally? Nothing. Only a whistle and a pen. Look, let us be serious with our police officers. These people, are, they love this country. They don't want to be treated the way they are treated. What we need to do is to make sure that we use the police to prevent crimes, not only to intervene in crimes. And these are some of the problems that we're having in this country, and that is why the insecurity is just unbearable. Look, the president just gave an amnesty to a lot of prisoners who were there. Some of them, they, they kill people. Some of them are hardcore criminals. They just, you know, without any kind of, you know, orientation or rehabilitation, they just release them from prison. And that is what is causing a lot of problems in this country. And the second thing you ask me about is economy. Look, let us remove this thing. It's not only economy. Why didn't you ask me about other, other forces? Look, let us trust our men and women in uniform and give them the responsibility for them to police our borders. And that is what is important for our security. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Boya. That is the leader of the Gambia Action Party. Glad to meet you and then have this interview. That's all we have time for. This is exclusive. I am Keba Jefang. Until we come on your way again, Next time, bye-bye.